Welcome to Minecom 2012. And to guide you through the next two days, here's Lydia. Hi guys, I'm Henrik. Mattis, animator. Hey, I'm Nathan. Hi, I'm Lynn. Hi, I'm Karen. Hello, I'm Daniel. Hello, I'm Aaron. Hello, I'm Jonathan. Hello, I'm Eric. Hey guys, I'm Owen. Hi everyone, I'm Warren. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm Patrick. Hi, I'm Vu. Hi, I'm Matthias. Hello, I'm Jon. Hello, everyone. I'm Mons. I'm Joan. Hi, everyone. I'm Anton. Hey, guys. I'm Chris. Hello, I'm Carl. Hi, guys. I'm Jacob. So 
I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these two here for a second. You you may know them from uh, from a few things, but um, Jens, how do you feel today? Being this is quite a crowd, even compared to last year. It's very scary, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And they're watching us from all sides. <laughs> there's no safe angle. Can I hide behind the creeper? No, someone will see you in here, actually. There's it's no true. hiding place. Is it hollow? <laughs> it is. Yes, it is, actually. <laughs> so these two are up here because, obviously, Marcus created the game. So let's give him quite a round of applause. Thank you. And wow. last year at Minecon, he gave over Minecraft to someone he trusts very much, which is Jeb here. And he's been doing an amazing job all year. Thank you very much. So Marcus, how do you feel today? It's been a year later. Now we're in a, we're actually in Europe, where, yeah. where, where uh, Minecraft was born. It feels very amazing to be able to celebrate with the fans again. Last Minecon was really fun, and this one is even bigger, I think, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it feels overwhelming and fun and just amazing. So thanks all for coming. <laughs> And Jens, I'm guessing you kind of feel the same way? Yeah, <laughs> what, what he said. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna keep them up on stage too long because we, we have some awesome videos and community members who have done some special things just for you guys today. But Marcus is going to, Notch, is going to have a panel later this afternoon where it will be kind of an interview type thing. Boo's gonna interview him and ask questions. Um, if you guys want to tweet using the hashtag MineCon2012, maybe your question will get answered. And then after that panel, which is sometime this afternoon, um, then Jens and the Minecraft team is going to be going over what their, what their plans are. So that's going to be here. Those are just two of the many things that are going on, but I'll explain that all in the, at the end. So I'm going to let these two go. Thank you. Give them Thank a big you. round of applause. How much did you guys love the opening video? I have to call these guys up because they are well, just three of the most awesome people ever. But Hat Films is here. Hello. Look, look everywhere. <laughs> um, so these three are kind of a great representation. <laughs> uh, okay, this works. These three are a really great representation, uh, rotate, <laughs> of what it means to me to be a community. They just are always, oh, there we go, okay. <laughs> it's very hard to talk and rotate, guys. Um, they are always the first ones that if I need something, some sort of video, like the one on the screen, which last week I said, hey guys, we should have a video, you know, for the opening ceremony, like you guys, oh, wait, over rotate, okay. Um, we should have a video like you guys did last year. And they put that together in a week? Yeah, it was a week. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, like, that was literally done on Saturday. Last Saturday we started, and then... John, easy. <laughs> <laughs> You're so loud here. Yeah, 
Uh, well, how about those door closing sounds, eh? Jeez, wow. <laughs> Blows your head off. <laughs> but I just wanted you to see the three of them. They're going to be around the show. They are absolutely incredible. You should check out their channel because they just make the most epic things. So Hat Films, give them a huge round of applause for the opening. <laughs> what make Minecraft what it is. The community just always far exceeds any expectation that any of the Mojang team has. We always, we'll, we'll see a video and start passing it around the office and it's like, how did someone come up with that idea? How did they make it? It's like the video that Hat Films did. I could never make a video like that. And we're so, lucky and blessed to have this community that not only enjoys making things alone and being creative, but that also enjoy making things together. And so I'm gonna call up Friday, if I'm saying it right. Because he made a really, really awesome video that I don't know if all of you have seen, but <laughs> Hello. I, I think they're pretty excited to see you. He made a really awesome video called Minecraft is Just Awesome, and it's a great representation of this huge community that we have, and where, a community where people would get together and, and sing, which is... Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. So we're going to watch Minecraft is Just Awesome, one of the many things to show off how great you guys are. Never gets old, huh? No. Kinda makes you wanna break it to song. Yep. I love the mountains. I love the clear blue skies. I love big bridges. I love when wolves run by. I love the whole world and all its loads of sound. Boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada. I love the ocean. I love your dirty thing. I love to go fast. I love to plant saplings. I love the whole world and all its craziness. Boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada. I love some redstone. I love my zombie friends. I love hot lava. I love how this game ends. I love the whole world. It's such a brilliant place. Boom the air, boom the air, boom the air, boom the air. I think we can all pretty much agree that Minecraft is just. Awesome. <laughs> this year, we've, we've really been trying to do all different things. And something we were working on was with Threadless. So I'm gonna have, uh, we have the three Threadless winners here. People from all over the world designed different shirts that were voted on, our whole team looked through, it was a huge, incredible process. And I have the three winners from literally all over the world here and on the screen. Soon you'll see their shirt. But can you introduce yourself? I'm Jordan and I'm from Texas. I'm Joe and I'm from Singapore. Hey everyone, I'm Alex, I'm from Chicago. Okay, so. The really cool thing that I'm not, that won't be shown on the screen, but the two of them actually, we, we decided to pick 10 designs, and the two of them each had another design of theirs picked, because they looked so different that when we went through, we're like, wait, that's the same designer. So if we can show the threadless shirts, the winners, maybe? Yes. So these are the three winners. Jordan, which one's yours? Mine is uh, the one with Enderman on it. Yes, the Enderman under the umbrella. And which one's yours? 
creeper. The creeper, the love bomb. And uh, so now which one is yours, Alex? The minor one with the diamond. So Threadless is here. They're going to be giving away shirts, which is pretty awesome. And uh, I think later this week, early next week, we're going to release 10 designs. So that's kind of an awesome thing. But the three of them came to kind of celebrate what they did. And that's just another example of the kind of crazy, awesome, creative community. So give them a huge round of applause. I don't really know if you guys are quite excited enough yet. So I thought maybe we would take a quick little stretching break. So I think I should call up um, hmm, someone that would, that, that his stuff always makes us dance. Um, I think maybe we could have Captain Sparkles. <laughs> This is Jordan, Captain Sparkles, and... Hello. <laughs> He's going to have a panel, the last panel tomorrow, after, before the closing ceremony, to talk more about how he, like, kind of, I think we called it Taking Over YouTube with Captain Sparkles. You titled it that, yeah. Uh, yes, I called it <laughs> Taking Over YouTube. Well, I mean, two million subscribers, I think you have kind of taken over YouTube. I'll take that as a compliment. Yes, it is. So, Jordan just recently made this very awesome video that's very danceable. So, I think, I think we, should, we should kind of get up and, and, and just stretch in your seats in a safe way, but still fun. Uh, so, let's hit uh, Minecraft style. Let's do it. Minecraft style. more. 
until you hit the core. When you find them, baby, then you know it's time to see the game we're playing. Dig in Minecraft style. It's a pretty incredible video, huh? <laughs> My next community member that I'm going to have come up is Mr. Seth Bling. Welcome back, Sethling here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he comes complete with fling. So impressive. Um, so what we're going to show today is first, Seth came up with an amazing map, one of many. Tell them about the first map. Uh, so I worked with another YouTube channel called the High Pixel, H-Y Pixel. <laughs> Great guys, and, uh, and we worked together and we brought Team Fortress 2 to Minecraft. And we built the map Dust Bowl, and we're gonna show that to you now, I think. So what Seth has created is one of many, many cool examples of how people are transforming the game. So he has now taken Team Fortress 2 and kind of made it into a Minecraft version. So Seth, you're going to show us something brand new today, just released last night, I think, right now? Yeah, that's right. So when you asked me to come up here and present, uh, we started working immediately on a new map. So we built another Team Fortress 2 map, uh, it's 2 Fort. And yeah, just for Minecon, just for you guys. So roll the trailer. <laughs>
I leaned over to Seth and said, how do you, how could you even make that? He's like, oh, I just put some redstone together. <laughs> yeah, this is super simple, just, just basically that. You just put the redstone together. So Seth, how many people work on something like that? Hi, we actually had a lot of people working on this. For Dust Bowl, we had a build team, the Gazamo build team. They put that, the structures and terrain together. And Hypixel and I uh, did all the redstone and command blocks. There's no mods involved in any of that, which I think is really cool. Uh, for t for Two Fort, we had uh, a pair of guys, Cairo Fox and Max. They did a great job on all the structures and terrain. We did all the, all the redstone and stuff again. We had a lot of uh, YouTubers help out playtesting. Um, and Mo Mojangsters, too, uh, helped out with that. And, and then you guys are all involved. I mean, you guys are the ones playing the map, so it's, it's, the, it's the entire community. So how can people play the map now? Uh, if you want to check out the map, it's on my channel, Seth Bling, again, that's Bling <laughs> Bling. bling. Um, Wait, Seth Bling Bling or Seth? No, just, just Seth Bling, just one. Uh, yeah, and make sure you check out Hypixel's channel, too. And you can, you can, if you download the map, you can play both of the maps. There's a button that switches between the maps, so it's, it's all right there. That's awesome. So, Seth, if someone wanted to learn how they could build a custom map, kind of like the one you made, what would they do here at Minecon? <laughs> well, Lydia, I'll be giving a panel tomorrow at 10.30, I think it's in the village, uh, and I'm going to be going over kind of step by step how we actually put together the two fort map. So it's, I'm going to do all the, all the, using MC edit, all the tools and everything, showing you how we did it. So it should be, should be a lot of fun. And today, after this session, um, there's also going to be a kind of more general custom map making panel, which Seth will be part of, along with the Voxel Box and other amazing creators. But if you're interested in map making, this is one of the guys to watch. So thank you so much, Seth. Give him a big, huge round of applause. Something that I am personally very, very proud and excited about is how the community has actually created all of these amazing initiatives. We have teachers all around the world using Minecraft to teach their students. There's going to be an educational panel over the weekend. There's going to be a panel about learning uh, how you can see how Minecraft EDU was actually created. But it's just incredible that people take the game and turn it into what they want. And I think that's part of the success of Minecraft. <laughs> Something that has happened recently, there was a project in Sweden where they were using the game to have youth in an area basically visualize what they want a public space to be. We started working with UN Habitat, which is a a really big deal for a, it's one of the first times I think ever that they've kind of gone so outside of normal corporate workings and they're working with a game company, us, all of you. <laughs> the goal being that by 2016-ish, we will have 300 public spaces where people use Minecraft to visualize their community. So instead of going into an area and showing someone a, an architectural drawing, what will happen is people will be able to log on to a server where the real world is created in game and they can walk around and say, hmm, I think if we're gonna use this public space, maybe we should use it this way. Maybe we should do this. So our first project, I actually, two weeks ago, went uh, with Vu from, from our team to Nairobi, Kenya, to the slum of Kibera, which is where our first pilot project's going to be. And before I went, we wanted to kind of show how you would use this. So I have some people that are pretty amazing builders. So I thought, okay, there's, there's tons of builders, but who can I call? Well, when I need building, I call Fire UK. Hello, everyone. Hello, Minecon. Woo! 
so the two of them, I send them this string of images that Vu shot the first time he went to Nairobi, basically like a very quick pano of the area and say, hey guys, can you, can you build this in Minecraft, like a, a replica as good as possible? And they did it. And not only did it, but actually did it amazingly well. I had never seen the, the, the field and sports field and public space area until I, sorry, the, I had never seen it in real life. I saw it in game. And when I landed in Nairobi and I went to Kibera and I looked around the sports field, it was absolutely incredible that it looked exactly like what they created. So having never been there, I could go like, oh yeah, I know, I know where that is, I've seen that. So right now we're gonna play the video that they made at a press conference in Kibera with UN Habitat. We showed this to them, explaining the game. This is a really incredible project that kind of transcends any of the norms of what a game company would do. And it's one of the biggest privileges that I have currently is to be even the smallest part of this project. So here is one of the first videos of block by block. You will see the space being built and then a side by side. Thanks to Fire UK for making it. So with their team, using a string of images that was not really that helpful, and Google Maps, the, these guys created that world that looks just like real life. Can you tell us how, like the most, how did you do that? Well, 
it, it starts with a very simple process of just going in and mapping it out. And you know, Phil, you started that, didn't you? I mean, you went in and you started with some people kind of talking about how you could approach that. Yeah, it wasn't as simple as you'd actually think because uh, normally we take reference images and then we go in and make something in our heads and it's like, we can just do what we want. Whereas this, it was like, this has to be here, that has to be there, and if you get it wrong, then you failed, so. <laughs> no pressure. I mean, uh, from the video point, I mean, it's so different for us to approach something that's built in the real world, because we're used to building huge, epic fantasy structures or something in space, so we had to kind of, you know, feel ourselves grounded within the planet Earth, you know, and build something that we, you know, had seen on a map. And, you know, I mean, you got to go visit it, Lydia. I mean, you, you've kind of seen the difference from what it was in game and what it was. And you've said to us that it was like almost like walking around the same thing in game and then going there, which is so amazing to really hear that. Yeah, I was actually very impressed because when I looked at the pictures, I was like, okay, this is going to be kind of challenging because, like they said, the two of them make these amazing epic builds. And so I'm saying, hey, can you guys build a, a dirt field for me? And they just totally stepped up, used Google Maps, used the images, and it, I can tell you from being there, it's absolutely incredible how similar it is. So basically what will happen is we will use that, UN Habitat is going to use the game, that map would be installed on computers, and then the community would actually be able to go in the game, see their field, give input, okay, we like this, we don't like this. They can see the plans, walk around, instead of looking at some drawing that means nothing to them. Because when I was there, I also saw a drawing of the field, and I couldn't tell you where anything was from that. But looking at what the two of them made, you could actually walk around and completely visualize it. So, uh, is there somewhere here at MineCon that people might be able to learn how to build like you two masters? Well, on Sunday, I think there's a little, little something at, at 1 p.m. You know, we've got some special videos and stuff. And there might be some special guests, some hatters maybe making an appearance to talk about a little yeah. thing called an epic hat venture. Yes. Maybe some exclusives never before seen, edited on the train here, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Fire UK has a panel tomorrow at 1. Um, that's going to be over in the main convention hall, so you want to check them out. Please give them a huge, huge round of applause. <laughs> so as we kind of diversify things with Minecraft, there's something very, very so new, I only know a tiny bit about it. And, and that's, that's okay because it's actually a really tiny thing. It fits into my pocket. Where's Daniel? Well, actually both people are named Daniel, so <laughs> either Daniel. <laughs> Have any of you heard of something called Raspberry Pi? Not the kind you eat, this kind. Daniel, what, what is that that I just pulled out of my pocket? This is the computer? No, seriously? Yeah, that's right, it's not edible. It's a tiny little computer that you can plug in a monitor and a keyboard. And what does this have to do with Minecraft at all? Uh, well. It has a lot to do with Minecraft, but uh, what you can do with this, you plug it into your TV, and uh, you, so of course you can surf the internet, or you can learn to program, and do everything that you, that you can do with the computer. But also, very soon, we will release a version called the Minecraft Pi Edition to this one. And why would I play this Minecraft Pi Edition instead of any of the other versions? Why? To me, it's just really super cool. You can put, put, put this in your pocket, you can walk over to your friends, you can have the LAN party, that's great. And also, the, the Minecraft Pi Edition, that will have a special feature, which is we will open up a small API for really, really simple scripting. So you can learn basically in an hour to, to script stuff in, inside Minecraft the world. So, I hope you guys all heard that. You can use this little Raspberry Pi 
non-edible raspberry pi and actually start learning how to develop and, yeah. and code, which is pretty incredible. And the other Daniel, see, I, I couldn't make a mistake on this one. They're both Daniels, and Daniel Kaplan's working on it. It's very easy for me. But um, this Daniel is actually from Raspberry Pi. So if you want to talk to someone and you <laughs> see him around, this is something really, really brand new. And I think at the closing ceremony, we're going to give you some more details about it. But this is just something we are really excited about because it's a way that people can start learning how to code. Also today at 15.30, I think in the in the theater, we will do a small uh, demo it of it and uh, talk about it. So if you're interested, come there and listen and uh, have a bit of do-it-yourself projects. Okay, so at 15.30 in the indie theater, you can come and watch. Thank you. We'll give that back to you. So, Minecron couldn't happen without some important people. And those would be, well, first of all, the whole Mojang team. They, most of them were here working last night until 3, 4 in the morning. Some of them never went home, building, putting stuff together, doing kind of anything that was needed. So please give them a huge round of applause. Besides them, this year Minecon was able to be bigger and better because we had some sponsors that helped us financially. And our biggest sponsor was Microsoft Xbox 360. If you look back in that corner all the way across, there is a multiplay tournament area, and there are, I think, more than 60 Xbox 360s that you can go back and play. So if you haven't had a chance to try it out, if you usually you play on your phone or on the computer, it would be a really great chance for you to get to play it. So a huge thanks to Microsoft Xbox 360. It's absolutely amazing what they, they just came in and helped sponsor this conference. Our other sponsor is Intel. They actually have a booth over in the exhibit hall, um, in the Times Square exhibit hall, and they have really cool things going on, actually. They have someone doing liquid nitrogen demonstrations. They're gonna be doing some giveaways. We're gonna give away two Ultrabooks over the course of the weekend to be determined how. Um, but yeah, they have been another amazing sponsor for us. So quickly and finally, I'm gonna kind of go over what's happening here because there are a lot of you, there's a lot of stuff happening and although you won't get to go to every single thing because there's so much, you'll be able to pick the things you go to and there is a wide range always happening. So one of the first things is I'm gonna show you a video and talk over it. We have an indie game theater. So we have different amazing, maybe it will come up. Yeah, there we go. Oh wait, okay. So we have amazing games. We have amazing games and indie developers who have come here just to show off what they are doing. They're not going to just hype their, their products. The sessions that they're doing, oh, I, actually we'll just watch it. No, no, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Probably for last week update. <laughs>
there was a brief before. Really? You've done this before. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Clog of War, nice big update. <laughs> Okay, everything can't go exactly as planned. That was a very weird showcase of them. But <laughs> the cool thing is we have indie developers here. So I know some of you in the audience actually want to create your own games. So in the indie theater, what we've asked them to do is instead of just, okay, tell about your game, they're going to talk to you about what it's like to be an indie developer, what they're doing, how things have happened, what you could do if you wanted to be one. And they will also have booths in the exhibit hall where you can try their games. They're absolutely amazing. You want to go check them out. A quick overview of what's happening this weekend. We have stuff going on on this stage all weekend long. Over in the New York Convention Center, we have all different panels happening. Indie, indie theater will be happening all weekend, and also different meetup spots, so you can meet with people who do the same things as you. You want to go visit Times Square, which is the exhibit hall. There's a diamond scavenger hunt, PvP competitions, YouTubers will be over there, giveaways, the Museum of Mojang, Cobalt and Scrolls, pretty much anything you could ever want. There's also uh, Jeb's Farm is over there, an interactive Minecraft area. Schedules are posted all around. Basically, this weekend is for all of you. Tonight, there is an awesome party where all of the rides are open at Walt Disney Studios. What you need to be wearing is your wristband. Everybody have them on? Yeah, okay. So that's going to be at 8 o'clock tonight. So for four and a half hours, you're going to get to hang out with all of these Minecrafters in a park, and it will only be us. So we will see you tonight. Thank you guys for being here. Welcome to MineCon 2012.